Oh, well, you heard us uh, talk about him, and here he is, Chuck Tomley, Shenandoah, Virginia, Pro Tour winner. In fact, uh, Chuck's single uh, victory on the Pro Tour came on TV in Hagerstown, I believe, a couple of years ago. So he's been on TV before. Chuck won a tour in Hagerstown, didn't right. he? On TV. Mentioned at length his uh, exploits in the qualifying and how he went uh, nearly 200 average in the first four games. Didn't do too bad in finishing up either. He said one of those things where you can relax. And his he finished up, I believe it was around 16.04. Oh. And yeah, I included was really a 104 surprised. game. Yeah. What was high qualifier, Mike? Uh, 88? Bill Honeycutt was uh, high qualifier with 1682. Huh. Do you recall how many 1600s we had? Hey, hey Danny, Danny I tell you, just very comfortably and fluidly, well, this perfect is, speed for his delivery. Yeah, this is his house. He bowls here. In fact, uh, lives very close by to the center because uh, last night on the way out after he came back in, to uh, check on the uh, qualifying scores, uh, somebody said, well, what if you have car trouble tomorrow? He says, I'll walk. He says, I'm only two minutes away. He says, I'm not going to miss it. <laughs> he qualified uh, in the previous tour stop as well, so he's been bowling well uh, the last several months. Yeah, I think it was a, a little while prior to that since he had qualified, and uh, it gives you a little confidence, and it should be pretty high right now the way he's throwing the ball. You could almost see that when he humped up on it just a little bit, a couple more mile per hour, and the bowler that plays Danny's type of game, it's very important to keep that speed down. Oh. That's, that's why thinner. we like to break nine, Mike. Yeah. Well, that's why I like to throw strikes. Makes the game <laughs> a lot easier, right? <laughs> okay. So Danny picks up uh, 10 bucks. And Shaq will step back in. He's got a high sanction game of 237 and a high three game set of 569, averaging a little over 142. Highest average 145, and I'm telling you that Chuck Tomney is better than that. When it comes to when they ring the bell and he shows up for the tournaments, uh, he usually has to stick around the second day. One thing, you, I think it, Chuck has such a good attitude uh, for a young bowler. I say young, he's around 30, couple years old. But uh, matter of fact, has a birthday, had a birthday. This just, past week, yeah. His, this weekend, right? Yeah. So. Uh, had several bowlers who had birthdays uh, this weekend. Danny Shipley's birthday was yesterday, as a matter of fact. Oh. He told me he was 29. I know he's 31. <laughs> I know for a fact. Because he's two years older than me, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but we're speaking, Chuck's attitude is just super. I mean, the guy can, uh, he catches bad tournaments just like we all do. And uh, on his way out, you really don't know that. He doesn't take it home with him. Uh, you can pass him after three games and say, how you doing? And if he's going bad, he might just chuckle and say, not so well, you know, but it's, it's really uh, keeps it in perspective. There you got he it. He did that a few times yesterday, huh? Yeah. If you watch when he grabs the ball, it disappears in his hand. You can you can hardly yep. see no pinkish red, the color of the ball that he's holding. It's. There's Danny Shipley coming off his 191 game. I tell you, Danny's doing a lot of things right that he did years ago. He's got the nice knee bend at the line and just sort of, I call it flopping the ball and not overthrowing it. Not a very pretty description when I say flop, but as if the bowlers know what I mean. It's just a nice smooth stroke. I'm not trying to drill it down the lane. Well, that's one thing about uh, Westview here. They say you throw the ball well, you get what you deserve. It's a very fair house, and uh, you get a lot of lot of action down in the pits. I'm sorry to hear that with the score I shot, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. If you keep the ball in play and then shoot give, your spares, you're going to get yourself your a chair. chance. That's, that's right. exactly yeah. right. It's uh, 
you know no matter what you start out with if you can get in stroke and do what you need to do you can catch up because it will relinquish the big games as we saw but Danny's just got to be careful not to let the adrenaline get going and he's got to back his thing off a couple mile an hour there you go so you can tell it's just that little extra and uh, the pins catch you much more often than we catch the bowler. Well, bowling on lanes 35 and 36 here at uh, Fairlanes Westview and Danny Shipley out of Catonsville, Maryland. Picks up the mark. Yeah. Of course, he's going to be a big favorite with the crowd because he bowls out of this house. 48 plus in the fourth for Danny. 29 plus for Chuck here and a chance to take the lead with a spare. And of course, we know he knows how to throw doubles because you do not average close to 200 for four games without him. Doubles and triples and mm. who knows what else. Yep, got nine out of that. In fact, uh, I'd say we had probably three or four people who put together as many as uh, six strikes. Uh, well, I know Doug the Shipley tournament. did it. He finished the Doug game Shipley with six. did it. Uh, Wes O'Donnell did it earlier today. Not to interrupt you, but look at the ball in Chuck's hand. You yeah. can't hardly see it. He's got a tremendous hand. Pretty big guy. So he moves over to uh, lane 35. He's put together a strike and a spare in the third and fourth frames, or is it the, uh, yeah, third and fourth frames. One pin lead, 49-48. Both bowlers working on a spare. Chuck's family, his daddy, a great bowler in his day, Leroy Tomney, and just a very similar personality, just a nice, easy-going guy from Virginia. They own a the little bowling center down in Virginia. Well, it's just like anything else. Uh, you get an early start in the particular game oh, as uh, Chuck slides by to the right. So I'll do that a couple of times yesterday. That's the single that he did miss off to the right, right hand well, corner. You hate to point it out when someone bowls as well as Chuck, but he lines up and that is the pin he's lined up with. The number six, number nine in that area. And it is tough to throw a ball straight. I don't care if you're a pro or, or an amateur bowler. It is hard to throw a ball directly straight and it's uh, Proven fact, you should use angle. Oh, Danny left himself uh, with a spare the last time. Ooh, tough one. That's all speed, Mike, with Danny's game. The ball was a little thrown a little bit harder, and it was just sort of, it wasn't in a full roll at the end of the lane, and it kicked off to the right. And as you saw, the pin comes back in front of the five. Instead of pushing it back, it's a sort of a glancing type blow. Nice try there as he tried to pick up the seven. Will be open in this frame, but he can pull within two if he grabs the seven pin, and he does. So we have a two pin match after five frames, 68 66, as you see there. The score, so the score we 66, uh, not 10, 56. Pen, 10 pins off on the score. It was uh, should have been 66, and he just carried forward with the 56. Pat Malton will straighten that out, I'm sure. Waiting for the winner of this match is Tom Clausen out of Willimantic, Connecticut. Tom was actually the second highest qualifier with 16.25 uh, for 10 games. You see Danny breaking the 4-5 after the 5-7, and it's, uh, it's just simply that the, the adrenaline's moving uh, this game a little closer and uh, just hasn't started throwing any strikes yet. Seventy-five for Danny, six frames. Chuck Tomney, sixty-eight in the fifth. And this is uh, sort of a ball when you jump up, you can't wait to get a hold of it. The bowler's uh, sort of left a little opening and you're looking for some breathing room. So I think you can look for Chuck to sort of hump up on this one a little bit. See a little more time, a little more concentration. And a pull. Yep. 
Yeah. Well, Shark not turned bad. around and uh, left everything. Well, but one on the deck. I'm sure he's pleased with what he's looking at, but he's he knows he just missed the pin that he was shooting at. So it takes a little extra concentration to hit this pin. Believe it or not, this can be a tough pin for for the pro on the second ball. Bullseye. Now it's important to take advantage of those kind of opportunities if you have them. Well, it's two. You're shooting at a spare, and also you're you're practicing for the ball he's about to throw because you want to get back in stroke. You, you don't want to go over on the other lane and be fishing uh, for that first ball. It's the biggest ball the, thro the pro throws. Spares are a very important part of this game, as we all know. But if you're not stroking that first ball, the spares are hard to hit. Nope. Wow, that hit that pretty hard. Sure did. 7-9 remaining. And that Chuck may be doing the same thing Danny's doing, even though Chuck's game is to throw the ball much faster uh, than Danny does. He can still overthrow also, and if you watch the ball, it's a good color to see if it really gets into its roll before it gets to the pins. Check Tommy. Now he'll shoot, uh, pick up at least one pin here. Let's see if he shoots the same pin again. I would think he will, but you That's never know. That's the side that he is, the treble on. And that's what he did yesterday when I saw him miss those single pins. He slides it by on the right side. So sure. Danny Shipley steps in and has the opportunity now to uh, take back the uh, lead and take command of the match with a couple of marks. Let's just flop back and forth with Danny taking the lead and Chuck taking it back. And uh, there a pretty go. ball. You, you see the difference? I mean, it's, I don't know how many mile an hour it may be. One, two, maybe a half, but you can physically see that the ball has a little more time to get into the roll. be interesting to have a uh, one of those radar guns. It sure would. Gun. I, I would love to know because I you know I don't even know the average speed of the the duck pin ball. I don't know if it's 16, 18. I think 10 pins claim that they're somewhere between 12 and, and 18 miles an hour. I think uh, I would imagine that we're pretty close to 80 percent faster than that so I would say we're around a 30 mile an hour range when Peter turns it loose I know I wouldn't want to be in front of it but yeah, some uh, of the big guys Steve Ivaron, Peter Pierce they all uh, sure exceed the 30 mile an hour range well and you know I bet we would be surprised the difference between let's say Danny and Peter I, I'll bet it's not more than just a couple of miles uh, an hour well I think more than a couple but I don't think it's like double that's the way Pete throws it. It really doesn't have time to get revved up. It's already there. It'll be interesting. We'll have to consider that. Maybe we can uh, talk one of our local I'll police departments out of a uh, gun for a weekend. I'll just speed to the next show, and when he pull me over, I'll bring him with me, you know? <laughs> okay, 10 for Danny. When he's striking, he, we have a one-pin match, 94-93. Chuck Tomney. Bowling frame eight, Danny 103 in the eighth. Ten would maintain a one pin lead. That's not what Chuck's thinking right now. He's thinking ten, but it's with this ball. Tom Clausen waiting in the wings for the winner. Push through the middle. And the result is that uh, after eight frames, we'll still have a very tight match. Well, I think with the bowler right now, Chuck has to think, well, if I get 10, I still have a lead, and that's not a bad place to be, but 10's going to be a tough chore. I'm betting we have a tie game after this ball, Mike. She has the two, four, and 10 remaining. So Chuck Tomney, oh. Well, and uh, one, one pin lead by Danny, so one frame and it's swapped. So Danny, uh, all he did was sit down and uh, take the lead by a single pin. 103, 102. Danny Shipley, one pin lead. Big frame for Chuck as he bowls the ninth frame. And, uh, That's right, he decided he was going to bowl first, so it means he will finish last by bowling the tenth. And this is a pivotal part of the match right here. Ooh. Well, that was close to disaster. I bowled with Bobby Stockman yesterday, and he made the 7-10 twice. Is that right? For spares both times. 
He said that's five years worth. I don't want to break it again. The odds are against me. Well, Chuck was looking at the 710, and fortunately for him, pin came sailing across the lane and took the 10 right out. So now he's just shooting at the 7 pin. Let's see his uh, little better success shooting the left-hand corner. Puts the mark on the board in the ninth, and now it's up to Danny Shipley. It's his match to win with a couple of big frames here. Chuck's little boy, Charles Ross, Tomney will give him a little bit of business here, 21 months old. Oh. oh, got a break there like Chuck did. Had the six and seven, kicked out the six. Here's where you find out if you're stroking the ball and you're mentally prepared because uh, it's just watch him, see if he has any hitch in this swing. I'm saying that he's going to hit it right on the button like he has all weekend. Oh. Got out of his hand a little early. All right, Danny has a big frame, the 10th frame, and if he can put a mark up and a big count on it, Chuck still has to do things right. You know, uh, there you see the score. If Danny were to go nine, make it nine, that would give him 132, and Chuck would still need a mark. So it's as, as big as that spare was, you have to sort of <laughs> leave it on lane 36 and go make a mark on lane 35, Danny's 10th frame. He's got another one pinner that he's looking at here. I would say if Danny were to pick a pin that he would like to shoot in this situation, it would probably be the be six. The it's six rather than the on the other side on the... Uh, very conducive to his stroke. Well, let's see what happens here. Right on the nose. Well, he gets one more ball. He'll be looking for a big fill here. Well, I tell you, anything uh, eight or nine, and Chuck has got to make a mark. So uh, as much as it looked like Danny gave it away, uh, I think that's a good position to be in. And once again, he bowled ninth and tenth frames first and, and actually had two opportunities to, to turn the game around a little bit or at least put some pressure on Chuck. Let's see what happens with this ball. Yeah, he's looking for the big fill. Ooh. Well, Danny knows he made a mistake. Matter of fact, he made two in the ninth and tenth, and uh, no one has to say a word. He knows exactly what happened, and now Chuck just wants to stay behind the foul line, not do what Danny just did. He does not want to rip two or three out of the middle or off the side, or he's going to be forced to make it. So, relatively easy task, but yet it can be turned around with one ball. Well, folks, we got a match. He needs 10. And I think he knows he needs the 10. See, check for Tom Neep for the match here. Well, <laughs> how big do you think that pin looks to him? <laughs> Want to shoot it, Mike? No, thanks. He only needs it to win. Seven pin's been a big pin in this match. Danny let it get away in frame number nine, and Chuck is shooting it for the right to go on to face Tommy Clausen. He's got it. Bullseye. They certainly made it exciting. 126, 125, Mike. One pin win for Chuck Tommy, and he'll go on to face Tom Clausen. You'll see all the action right after this.